So you're looking to start charging for your web design service, but you have no idea where to begin. You may have some questions like, where do I find clients or how do I reach out to them? How do I know what to charge or how do I deliver a website that my client is gonna love? Well, by the end of this video, you'll be able to confidently find clients, build them their dream website and get paid for your services. Plus, if you stick around to the very end, I'm gonna reveal some cool bonus tips on getting even more money per project. Now, I'm gonna assume at this point, you've already built a few websites and you're ready to actually begin charging for your services. In case you're unsure as to whether or not you're ready to move forward, here are a few prerequisites that I think you should keep in mind before you get started. So first off, I think it's fairly obvious, but you should know how to build websites. If you're gonna be offering a service, you should be constantly practicing to sharpen your skills and stay up to date with all of the many constant changes that happen. And this is exactly what my channel is designed for. I'm here to teach you how to build any website step-by-step step so you can follow along and improve your skills fast. Now, the way that I keep up on my practice is actually by building fake websites offline using a service that downloads WordPress locally to your computer. The software that I use is called Local WP, and I'll leave a link to it down in the description below if you guys are interested and wanna check it out. It's a free software that you download to your computer, and I personally haven't had any issues with it. It works the exact same way that a regular website would, except for the fact that it's not actually published live on the internet. Once you run the program, you'll be able to open your internet browser and go to the domain name just like you would if you were building a real website. This will let you experiment with new plugins and design techniques that you haven't done yet so that when your client requests things, you have all these tricks up your sleeve. Now, the next thing to keep in mind is it's a really good idea to have your own personal portfolio to show off the level of your skill and give them an idea of what they can expect you can provide. I recommend building your own website where you can host your own gallery showing off your work. I mean, after all, you are a web designer, so it'd be a little ironic if you don't have your own website. If you haven't even built a website yet and you're looking to build your own personal portfolio website, I'll leave a link down in the description to another one of my videos where I teach you how to build a personal portfolio website from start to finish. Having your own personal portfolio to show off your work will instantly add some credibility to your name when they're looking at you as a prospective contractor for the project. But I strongly recommend you practice building websites as often as you can to sharpen your skills so you don't come across as someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. You might even build a few of your first websites for free just until you feel comfortable enough to start charging. And that's okay for gaining experience or for helping friends and family. In fact, that's actually how I got started with the first few clients that I was building websites for. I did it for friends and family for a very cheap price or even for free just to make sure that I understood the process fully before diving into the world of selling my services. Be careful though. You don't wanna spread the word that you're a web designer who does work for free. Your goal here is not only to build up your personal portfolio, but also to build your confidence to begin charging for your services. So make sure you only do this if you're still in the learning process. Okay, so the first part of this video is going to be focused on getting you clients because that's one of the most important things that you can do. I mean, you can't just build a website for someone if there's no one to build a website for. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, getting clients can be one of the most difficult parts of the process. Yes, even more difficult than building the website itself sometimes. You'll realize that as a web designer, you're 50% marketer and 50% web designer. I mean this specifically if you're trying to be a freelance web designer because you have to actually go out and find your own clients. So I wanted to talk about a few of the ways that I myself have found clients in the past and other ways that you can find clients as well. So let's get into it. The first and best way, in my opinion, to get clients for web design work would be word of mouth. Asking your friends and family and acquaintances if they know anybody who needs a website and asking them to put you in touch with them. In fact, my most recent project was done in this way. My coworker and videographer here on the channel has a friend who works in recording and mixing songs, and he knew that his buddy needed a website, so he mentioned my name. After you build a website for someone, you can ask them if they know of anyone else who needs web design work and if they'd be willing to share your contact information. As you get more clients and complete their work and they're happy, you'll get your name out there as other people tell their friends about you. But it always starts with asking your friends and family and people around you if they know anyone who needs a website built. You can do this by hopping onto your social media and putting this on your story, like on your Instagram or Facebook, and you can send messages to all your friends, asking them if they know anyone who needs your services. It's a very easy and free way of finding clients. 
Another way that you can look for new clients is by joining freelancer websites like Upwork, Fiverr, or freelancer.com. And you can create an account as a seller and you can set up pricing tables to describe the different levels of effort with each of those levels. And then you can start looking for projects in that way. This is gonna be second place after word of mouth because it's incredibly easy to start one of these accounts from the comfort of your own home and start meeting people immediately who are looking for exactly what you're offering. The last way that you can look for clients that I'll cover in this video is scoping out local businesses. This could even be a local business that you go to on a regular basis, like your favorite restaurant that's in town or your favorite barber shop or something like that. It always helps if you already like the business because then you have all the more reason to offer an improved website for them. What you wanna do is check out that business online to see if they even have a website. And if they do, to see if it looks good or if it's out of date. If they don't even have a website, that's good enough reason for you to ask if you can speak with the owner and tell them how much you would love to build them a website for the cheapest price possible. And if they already have a website, but you think it looks a little outdated or ugly, you could show off your portfolio to the owner and then tell them that you would love to make the site look 10 times better. You can even offer to add extra functionality to a local business's website if you think that they need it. You could see that your local barber shop, for instance, has a website, but all it has is a contact form. You could then offer to rebuild the site and include an appointment booking service that clients can schedule appointments directly on the site. This is another solid option for getting clients because you might not even have to build the site from scratch if they already have one. You just have to make it look better, which saves you a lot of time and effort. All right, so you've got your first client, you've shown off your portfolio, and you've been practicing so you know what you're doing. Now it's time to set up your initial meeting over the phone. Now, before you just hop on the phone and call your client, it's important to first take some time to do some preparation. Not only do you wanna make sure that you have questions for your client, but you also wanna anticipate the questions that they're going to ask you and prepare for them so you don't sound unprepared over the phone. Keep in mind that when you call the client, this is definitely the portion where you're gonna to wanna to ask a lot of questions and take a lot of notes. The first thing I usually do after some small talk at the beginning of the call is asking them a ton of questions about their business. How does it run? What's their process look like? How long does the project usually take? And so on. If anything, being a web designer is a great opportunity to continue to broaden your horizons and learn new things because you definitely wanna learn what their business is and how it works every time you get a new client. Ask them what their customers are specifically looking for when they come to this business. There's no way to list out all of the questions that you should ask because I usually just leave it open-ended and keep asking questions as I think of them. You're just trying to get a grasp of what they do and how they do it. Simple as that. Now that you know how their business works and you got an understanding of the process, you can start to ask your clients for the materials that they're gonna look for on their website. So this is the part where I would segue into asking them if they already have a logo for their company and if they have any company colors that they wanna to stick to. Next, I'll make sure that I ask them for any product images and if they have any promotional videos. And I'll also mention that they need to start coming up with some text as well to include on the website. Depending on what type of freelancer you are, you can offer to help them find images or write some of the text, but I personally don't do that. If you do, make sure you charge for it. Ask them if they have any other websites that they know of that they wanna imitate. These are inspiration sites, and they'll help you get a better understanding of the look that they're going for. If they don't have any example websites, you can always show them examples yourself. And this is where having your own portfolio with a bunch of websites displayed is absolutely incredible. Lastly, you can ask them what contact information they would like placed on the website, like emails or phone numbers. So now you know how the business works and we have all of the materials squared away. This is the part of the phone call where I open up the floor to the client and I ask them if they have any questions for me. I can tell you from experience that most of these questions are gonna be the same, so it's important to prepare beforehand and know what you're gonna say. They're probably gonna ask you things like, how much is this gonna cost? Couldn't I just build the website myself? How long is this gonna take? And what does your process look like? What if we wanna change things later? And these are all valid questions that you should definitely take some time to have answers for. When they ask you how much this is gonna cost, I usually tell them that the price is what we're trying to figure out in today's call. This is where I ask them how many pages they're looking for or what kind of functionality they want. And then I ask if they wanna insert some contact forms or calendar widgets or something like that. Once I find out the scope of work, I tell them that I'll have the proposal to them with an itemized breakdown by the end of day or by this time tomorrow. This gives you time to crunch the numbers and find out what you wanna give them after you know what they want. And if they ask, couldn't I just build this myself? They could be genuinely curious or they might be testing you. Either way, I usually like to answer them like this. Definitely you can build the website. 
But before you do, let me just say this. I believe that your clients get a lot more value from the work that you do and for saving them the time for them to become experts in your field. The same applies here. My responsibility is to have the expertise and complete your website efficiently so that you can do the same for your clients. The rest of the questions are a lot easier to answer, like how long this takes or what your process looks like. So I'll let you guys kind of prepare for those on your own. All right, so you've got the first meeting out of the way and now it's time to take a half a day or the entire day to determine the price of the project. This part can be a bit tricky because there's a lot of moving parts, but at the end of the day, you get to set your own price. So that makes things a little easier. If you're new to web design or maybe you have experience, but you're still new to becoming a freelancer, I definitely recommend starting cheaper and working your way up. Right off the bat, people don't really have a reason to trust you, so lowering your prices and providing quality work will allow you to build up clientele at a steady pace. Now, I think it's obvious to mention that you shouldn't start too cheap and undersell your work or work yourself into the ground. At the same time, don't oversell yourself, but most importantly, do nothing for free at this point. Once you start charging for your services, it's very important to include everything in your scope of work so that you get paid for it. When you're unsure, go with your conservative estimate. It's also really helpful to ask your client for their budget because this can help you understand what they're working with and what they can afford. From here, you can negotiate a fair price that you both agree on, which is pretty important. Once you know their budget, you can let them know how many pages would be fair for that price. And remember, you're the expert, so you know what you're talking about. So when you set your price, be confident and state it clearly. At the same time, it's also your responsibility to price your work as fairly as possible. And remember, I mentioned at the beginning that when you're just starting out, it's important to start a little bit cheaper. When you send over your pricing for the project, you need to make sure that you set clear expectations for everything listed out in your scope of work. This is where you can break down your process and charge for the individual things, like how many pages, how many hours is it gonna take to finish the project, as well as other things like additional plugins or functionalities, like adding a social media widget. If you're building an e-commerce store, you need to increase the price dramatically because it takes a substantial amount of time to set up. Make sure you also mention that they're gonna be covering all of the expenses for the website. This sounds obvious, but you'll have to make sure that you clearly state it in your scope of work. Let them know that they will be paying for the domain registration and the web hosting. Oh, and also be sure to use our special link that I'm gonna leave down in the description for your domain registration and hosting every time you sign up a client because we offer the first year free on the domain registration and a massive discount on the hosting plan. This will make them happy knowing that they're saving money and that you're dealing with the hassle for them of getting the hosting and domain name set up properly. You can even tell them that the SSL certificate, which is the website's encryption, is included for free with our link. This is obviously a huge selling point when you offer huge discounts like this to every client you work with. Again, that's the first link down in the description. All right, so here's some of the most important stuff. First of all, make sure you get half of your payment up front. You can easily do this by using companies like PayPal and ask for the payment half up front. It's important to make sure that you have a deposit when you start working. And on that note, make sure that you also have a professional invoice and payment method set up beforehand. I personally use PayPal because it's incredibly easy to use and easy to set up. You can instantly send over professional looking invoices to your clients and get paid directly to your PayPal wallet. It's really easy and an efficient way to ensure a seamless transaction. Another thing that I would have ready beforehand would be laying out your pricing additions for additional services. Things like domain registration or moving a domain or revisions or adding pages or adding more plugins, etc. You could even set up a pricing table with three individual price points. You could have a basic, a medium, and a premium package, which include additional plugins or pages or whatever you want them to include, and they'll have different pricing for each of them. A pretty cheap standard that you could go by would be about $100 or $200 per page, and if it's a one-page website, you could still charge about $200 depending on how complex the site is. I'll let you figure out your pricing options based on your skill level. Remember during your initial phone call with your client when you asked for all the media files like videos, pictures, and text? Well, this is the part where you're gonna contact your client and ask for all of those materials. You're going to gather all of your media from the client and then create the initial rough draft of the site. 
I've got plenty of in-depth tutorials on how to build websites from scratch using WordPress and Elementor. So check out the channel and decide which site works best for you. You're gonna wanna create a rough draft of the site using their media files and whatever text they give you as well. If you don't have enough text or you don't have enough images, that's okay. You can always use resources like dummy text or stock photo sites like unsplash.com for free images that you can use solely for the rough draft. So you can at least give them a taste of what the site's gonna look like when it's completed. Okay, so step number five is the final site build and revisions. You've already completed the rough draft and sent it over to the client so that they can look at it and give you any pointers or finally get you any last minute images or videos that they want included on the site. Now it's time to make sure that you put in the final changes and include anything else that they want on their site. Of course, this would be negotiated in the scope of work, but this part is where you're completing the project and you're about to turn it over completely to the client. The most important part of this step is completing the agreed upon revisions of the rough draft. I call it the rough draft even though the site is already complete because once you complete the website and deliver it to the client, they are gonna have different parts of the site that they wanna change and customize a little further. When you're writing up the scope of work, I always include at least three individual revision meetings for the client to meet with me three final times to make any last minute changes. Of course, you can decide how many revision meetings you wanna set up and have that included in your pricing table, but it is a necessary part of the process. This is also where you can make sure that you review all of your work by clicking on every single button on the website just to make sure everything's hooked up and is working properly. All right, so you've completed the website and you're ready to deliver it over to the client and accept your final half of the payment. A couple of quick things to remember when you're delivering the website to the client. You want to show them how to log into the back end of the website and change the password. So show them how to go to the settings and change it to their own password. Now, before you have them change that password, this is where you send them the invoice for the completed project. And like I mentioned before, I always use PayPal because it's the easiest to collect a second half on the back end. It's really easy to draft up a simple invoice and send it to the client. And if they pay you, you get the money immediately. Once they've completed payment, you can show them now how to change their passwords. And if you want, you can also show them a little bit of the back end of WordPress, just in case they wanna add some more pictures or another post or something like that. The last thing that I show them how to do is update their own website just by clicking on the rotating arrows, which are the update symbol on the WordPress dashboard. And I also let them know that it's important to occasionally check in on their website and make sure that everything is up to date with that update button so that the site doesn't randomly crash. All right, guys, if you made it this far into the video, you definitely are here for the bonus step, which is upcharges. You can mention these during the initial phone call or the pricing table or at the very end when you're delivering the project. At any point, you wanna mention the different additional services that you can provide for their website. This is the key to making the maximum amount of money per project. You need to let them know that they can hire you for additional hourly rates at a later time to come back and do monthly maintenance to the website. Maybe they have a project coming up in the future, like maybe in a month, and they wanna rehire you to add project images to the site. You can also tell them that you know of additional safety procedures that you can add to the security of the website, like hiding the backend login screen, or preventing brute force attacks, or using blacklists and whitelists. I have a video on the channel that also talks about securing your website from hackers if you're interested. I will also leave a link to that video in the description below. You could offer additional services for design like photo editing or logo design. You can also help them set up business emails that are hooked up directly to the website's domain to look even more professional. And you can offer to add extra plugins and widgets to do extra stuff like insert booking widgets or Instagram social feeds into the site so people can DM them or book appointments directly on the site. Maybe you're good with marketing and SEO as well. These are services that someone with a new website would definitely be interested in. What I'm trying to get at here is that you can be super creative and come up with a ton of additional plugins and services that you can add to the original project to make larger profits on that project. The sky's the limit. So now that you understand how to start charging for your web design services and you're getting ready to build your first site for a client, check out the video in the top right corner to learn how to deliver a website to a client like a pro. And if you're getting started today on building a website for a client or maybe just building your own personal portfolio for web design, click on the link that I have in the top left corner and get hooked up with a custom domain name and discounted hosting plan. I'll see you guys in the next video.